Welcome back to Just Scribble. I want to share my most recent two stationery selection subscription boxes with you. I am going to do these a little bit different. Normally I do an unboxing where I haven't seen the items and we go through them together. However, my unboxing video turned out to be an epic fail and we had company show up unexpectedly. I inadvertently failed to pause the video and when I came back thinking it was paused, I actually paused it and proceeded to share the unboxing without actually taping all of it. So we are going to do it a little differently because I know what's in these boxes. However, I think it's going to be a nice change from a traditional unboxing and also kind of perfect since right now the stationary selection subscription is on vacation for lack of a better word there's no november box because mitts is moving and so the next box won't be until december and so this will give you an opportunity to see some of the things that you could get in your boxes since september's box is art focused and october's box is not you can see kind of the variety and see if it's something that you would like i am actually going to unbox or not unbox but show you october 1st because what i'm doing with the september box is a little bit different and takes a little bit more time and so it just made more sense to do it this way so this is the october box we always get the little paper and on it, Mitz has written us a letter which includes a description of all the items in the box, an update about her, the boxes, her family, what's going on. And it does include a reminder that we will not have a November box. So if you're an automatic subscription subscriber, you won't be charged for November. It'll automatically skip that month and it'll go to December. So if you like the stationary selection subscription boxes, make sure you are following her on Instagram and sign up for her newsletter on her website so that you know when subscriptions become available. So you could grab one yourself and decide if you wanted to do an automatic renewal, you can cancel at any time. So this is the October box. And so the October box is very stationary focused. I'm going to go through the items, which I've already opened up and used a little bit, but I wanted to show them to you um, so you guys could see what we get and what some of the things that you could get into your boxes might be. So, and tell you my thoughts about them too. So the first thing and the main item um, in this box, or what I consider the main item, is this pencil holder or um, pencil case. So this is from King Jim. I don't know if you're familiar with the brand. They, they do sell some King Jim products on jet pens. But this is actually a new item that was recently released, and so I don't think it will be very easy to find in the States um, necessarily until it's been out a little longer. But it is the Picali. I'm sure I'm saying that completely wrong, but that's what it looks like to me. So it came with this little plastic around it that shows you how it works. But basically, it is a pencil case that has a magnetic closure. So. When it's on your desk, it sits like this, and you can put your pens and pencils in there, and then when you need to go or you wanna throw it in your purse, you just close it up like that. It doesn't hold a ton of items, but it does hold enough to toss into your bag for your essentials, and because each compartment is separate, you could actually fill each part up to the little edge, and it will still close. There were different color variations of this. So if you've seen any other unboxings or you saw someone using one on Instagram, their colors may have been different because we don't get to pick our colors. It's completely random. Mine is this sort of deep green and sagey kind of color, which is nice. I feel like it matches and coordinates nicely to my TSL pouch that I got in one of my recent boxes. So this is my... Um, TSL, the, stamp, the Superior Labor pouch that I got with one of my subscription boxes. And this and this kind of go nicely together. So it's kind of like a little green set. Most of my other pouches are blue toned because I had gotten a lot of blue pouches from um, subscription boxes since I first signed up mm, almost two years ago, I guess. And so um, it's kind of nice to have a little bit of a change and I could throw both these in my bag and they carry 
lots of stuff combined. So, so this is the first item, which is the little pencil case. Then we got this calendar. And so this is a daily calendar. I'm not going to open it because I'm actually gifting it. I got this before in my subscription box for 2019 and my sister wanted it and I gave it to her and she loves it. It is very, very thin paper and it has a page for each day of the year. So it's a little flip calendar. And so I'm going to gift this to her again this year. You can kind of see on the back what the pages look like. I don't think it's Tomoe River paper, but it's very thin like that, just to give you an idea. The company that makes these only makes them for release right before the new year. And so you can't buy them throughout the year. And so Mitz, um, everybody really likes these. And so she tries to include them in the box towards the end of the year so that we can have one for the upcoming year. So I'm going to be gifting that. But so that is our little page a day calendar. Then we got this little set of Velos paper clips. These are really, really cute. I actually put them into a book to test them out when I did my first video. And they hold quite a bit of paper and they're very, very nice. And I love that they are a little triangle. It's just a cute little paper clip. I have a thing for paper clips. I like paper clips of different sizes and styles as long as they're functional, not those decorative ones that don't actually hold any paper. But I really, really like these. So I'm actually very excited about these being in our subscription box because it's not something I've ever seen before. And so I think they'll be a great addition to my planner and my journal so I can mark pages or group sections of pages together. So that was another item that we got in our box. And then we got this little card set. And so this is based off of um, Japanese folklore. It's like a supernatural monster. And I actually didn't open these yet, but I will open them with you guys since we're doing this little show and tell a little bit different. And so everyone, I there's, I forget how many monsters are in this little folklore. It's maybe four or six, I'm not really sure. But everyone, there were different styles of this, and so there were different monsters. And actually, Mitz posted a YouTube video recently where she was doing some watercolor, and she sketched out some of these monsters, and she watercolored them. So if you're interested in more about the little folklore stuff, that's a good place to check it out. But I got the little red guy with his tongue sticking out. And so they're little note cards, real thin pieces of paper, and then little envelopes to go with them if I can get them out and so you could write your little note put it in your little envelope send a cute little letter to a friend or use it to address uh, or use it for a gift card something like that I'm never going to get that back in there but so that's what they look like I like it when um, Mitz includes little tiny stationery like this because it can be used for that purpose but it also makes great ephemera for your journal so you could tip in this little piece of paper and you could write a quote on it or a memory that your child something your child said that was funny you can put the little envelope on there on your journal page and you can stick something private in there that you don't want somebody to see um, it has a lot of purposes so I think those are cute and the little monster is fun since this was the October box even though I'm a little late due to my snafu with filming, it kind of went along with Halloween. So that was a cute little thing for her to do as well. So in addition to those items, I'm gonna move the box out of the way. So we got the pencil case, the little note card set, the calendar and the paper clips. And then we also got a pencil, a pen, a marker and lead refill for the pencil. So, we got this pen, which is Nahoto Ray's pen. It is a gel ballpoint pen that's supposed to be flash dry. And so it is A little ballpoint pen and it's very like old school design right very retro 
it's cute and it actually has really nice weight so i think this is a fun pen to have just to toss into your bag and obviously it fits nicely in the little pencil case this is actually a marker um it's teranashi teranishi i'm not exactly sure how you pronounce it but it is something that her husband used when he was a child and so she got us all a gray colored one so it's very very versatile and so it's Taran Ishii. That's the brand. And so it's just a nice little marker. These are great for drawing your layouts if you bullet journal, because then the lines of your layout for like your weekly or your monthly, they don't really stand out so much. And so the content of your planner is more obvious, I guess, or easier to read because you don't have such a strong line if you're not using black. And so I tend to draw my layouts in a sort of cool or warm gray color. So this is actually a great addition for me because I have a distinct purpose for it. And then we got this mechanical pencil. It's a drafting pencil. It's a Pentel Slim. It's a 0.5 millimeter and it has this little um, thing at the back where you can tell it what size lead you have in it so you don't forget what lead you have in it. So it is a mechanical pencil and then she bought us lead refills to go in it um, in 2B. And so it has kind of a unique or semi-unique opening in that the lid doesn't come off. You just twist it like this and then the lead comes out this teeny tiny little hole can see that there's like a little hole right there and so that's how you get your lead out so you don't risk the lid popping off and all your leads going everywhere and then this is the pencil I swear my handwriting is always so much better when I'm not videoing it might be the angle of how I'm standing when I video but so that is the pencil so those are the items that we got in our October box, a pen, a pencil, a marker, the pencil case, which is one of my favorite items in it, the little paper clips, the 2020 calendar, which my sister is gonna be so excited about, and the cute little supernatural Japanese folklore card set. So that is October. And I think definitely worth the subscription price, the pencil case and the calendar combined um, are definitely worth the price and then it never hurts to have more pens. I have so many pens but I use them all and I love getting unique pens from the subscription box that I wouldn't necessarily be able to get in the States otherwise. So that's always a nice treat too. So that was October but for September it was an art focus box. So I'm going to show you guys what we got, but then I'm going to demonstrate how it works. So once again, a little card with a letter and we got this card that Mitz did herself. So this is her handwriting and her drawing little Canadian maple leaf that she watercolored and she used the products in this box to do this. So what we got, let's take all this out. So we're crinkling around. So we got four Holbein colored pencils. So we got a burnt umber, we got yellow ochre, crimson, and Prussian blue. And then we got this Pentel brush pen in a sepia color. We got a drawing pen also in a sepia color, although this sepia is browner and this one comes off a little bit more gray. We've got a uni pencil sharpener for the colored pencils. We got MT Slim Washi Tape in white, which I am very excited about. I, let me open this up real quick so you guys can see the thickness of this tape. There we go. 
So MT washi tape is by far my favorite washi tape. It's just always awesome. It never seems to go bad or get weird. Um, and I really like thin ones, especially in my planner because they don't take up a whole lot of space, but they still can add color or you can use them to color code something or to mark out an area. And I'm actually excited about the white for a couple of reasons. One is that you could use it kind of as a correction tape. So if you were writing in your planner and your journal and you messed up, you could put a little piece of the washi tape down and then write over it. And so it would give you a nice way to kind of correct without using whiteout. I also like the fact that I could use a piece to lay it into my planner on my weekly page or something for something that was tentative and I could peel it back off if I decided that that wasn't happening that day or I wanted to move it to a different day. And so I could kind of use it in a post-it note kind of fashion. But it also works when you're doing art. You can use it to hold down the paper that you're drawing on or that you're watercoloring on onto a hard surface. You can use it to add an edge to the page so that when you're painting, the edge stays crisp and you have a nice little edge around it. You could draw out something in the washi tape and paint over it and then remove it and the paint won't be wherever the washi tape was. And so I'm excited for the thin. I like thins and I don't actually have white. So I thought this was great. Other people may not have been as excited about the white washi tape, but um, I am. I think it's a great, a great option to have in it. Anyways, that's the white washi tape. So, didn't really mean to go off on a tangent for you, with you guys about the white washi tape, but I was excited about it. But the main item in our box for September was this Kuretake Travel Watercolor Set. So Kuretake watercolors are very nice. I have some other ones, but I don't have one that's in a little set like this. And so I thought that was a really neat thing to offer and a nice art set to do for the stationery box because it's something different. So it has a little handle here and it both goes closed. And then inside it came with this little pouch that's attached, which I think you could stick like your rag that you use to wipe your, or wipe your brushes on. Um, you could probably put ephemera, washi, anything else in there that you wanted. It came with a few postcards, so you can see, that are watercolor. So it came with three of these watercolor postcards and they slip in to the little case and they stay so you can use it to transport that way or you could watercolor while they're behind this little plastic edges where it's keeping it in place. It also came with this removable little pouch that Velcro's in and with it it came with a bottle to put water in and a water watercolor brush. So you can fill this with water, keep it in your little pouch, and then you can use it to fill your brush when you're on the road or out and about. So you just put the water in there, plug that little guy there, squeeze very, very lightly to get the water to go through it, and then watercolor. It's pretty simple, easy, but then it's very compact because it goes back into itself like that, and you throw it back in there. And actually you could add a pen in there, if you wanted to have a micron pen or something like that with you, you could put a drafting pencil in there. Lots of things you could put in there so that everything was all contained. And then it came with the watercolors. And so this is the watercolor set that it came with. And in the back, it has a little swatch guide basically of all the colors. And it's designed so that you can use this right here for mixing and you can actually stick it when i did this the first time it's it's never easy to slide something into elastic i feel like but it does work it's not too terribly hard but you have your watercolors there and you have your mixing tray here mitz did comment that she feels like it's better if your mixing tray was white underneath which is true just because it's easier to see your colors but you could take a piece of watercolor or a post note or something and just stick it underneath like that and then it would be white so you could see the color that you're mixing. So I am excited about this travel watercolor set. I 
don't plan on throwing this in my bag and carrying it with me all the time. I have a different set that I'm going to be doing a video on very, very soon that I have set up for that that has my palette that I decided I wanted. But I have been wanting to keep a watercolor set at work. I sometimes journal or do art when I'm having my lunch in the office. And a lot of times I think, oh, it would be nice if I had some watercolor so I could put some watercolor down or I could do a little sketch and a little watercolor at lunch just to get a break from the norm of your business day. And so I am actually going to take this to work and I'm going to keep it there because I have everything that I need all in one place and it has all the colors that I could need and it's great. So that's actually what I'm going to do with this. I am going to show you that I swatched out in my first fail video. I swatched out the colors of the watercolors and the pencils and the sepia um, brush pen. And so I'm going to show that to you so that you guys can see the colors. And then we're going to do a little watercolor together just to show you how the colors work and how they blend. All right, so this is my swatches that I did originally of the colors and the watercolors. There is white on here, which I know you're probably not going to be able to see the white. I am not a fan of white watercolor. I don't really find a whole lot of use for it, but I'm sure at some point I will use it. Otherwise, it can just stay there and it'll be perfectly fine. But these are the colors swatched out from the set. And then these are the four pencils. And so this one is the Burnt Umber. This one is the yellow ochre, which I then swatched next to the yellow, the ochre color up here to show you that it matched. So you could use these together. This is the crimson. And then last is the Prussian blue, which I also swatched against the watercolor so you could see it. This right here is the sepia drawing pen. This is a Kakuyo drawing pen. I don't think I mentioned that earlier, but that is the color that it is. And then this is the brush pen, a swatch of the brush pen. So you can see it's a little different color than the sepia drawing pen. They're not exactly the same. It's a little more gray toned, but they're pretty close. And then I had done a little test to see how well the watercolors mixed. So I took a little bit of the ochre and I took a little bit of the Prussian blue and mixed them together to make a kind of green color. So that is what I had swatched live on the first video that failed. But I wanted to show it to you just so you guys could see the colors and see how it worked in case you happen to find one of these um, watercolor sets out and about and you wanted to get one for yourself. So now just to make this a little bit different and because it's fall, which I love, I thought it would be fun to do a little watercolor so that we could try out these watercolors in action and see kind of how they go. So I'm going to move this stuff out of the way and I'm actually going to use the MT tape to tape down the corners of this just so it doesn't move while we are painting. I'm not using the brush that came with the pocket set for this. I am actually going to use my Koi Sakura watercolor brush. Um, it's already got water in it and I like the brush a lot. It's one of my favorite brushes, so we are going to use it. This is my Sakura Koi watercolor brush. Um, I've had this for a really long time. You can see the tip. I will say I am not the best artist in the world, nor am I an expert watercolor or watercolorist, I guess. I am learning and it's relatively new to me, so I am definitely not the best, but part of the premise of my channel being just scribble is that you just go for it. You scribble down a picture and you attempt to watercolor it and every time you do it you'll get better. You will progress and you will find out what you like and what you don't like and maybe watercolor won't be for you. 
which is completely fine and maybe you'll like some other medium but maybe you'll find that you absolutely love it and you enjoy it and even if you're not the best or the most professional at it it turns out pretty cool so that's just my little tidbit about the art and the watercolor so i think you can see this pretty well but you probably can't see this ink the set so let me scoot that so you can kind of see it all right so i sketched out this pumpkin this is on fabriano watercolor paper and i sketched it out um before the video just because it was easier than making you guys sit through the painful process of watching me figure out how to sketch out a pumpkin but this is my pumpkin and so we are going to color it now i am going to grab my cloth that i use to absorb my brush when i'm rinsing it and we will get started all right so even though this is a water brush i did get a little jar of water just in case i needed it to rinse the brush and this is the um rag that i used to wipe my brush off when i'm rinsing out the color a lot of people use terry cloth um rags or towels um everybody uses something a little bit different this is actually a cloth diaper from when my kiddo was a child we did not use them as diapers but we use them as burp cloths they work awesome for that and they work great for this so that is what i'm using and we are going to get started so to get the water to the end of your brush you just squeeze it just a little bit so very very softly and the water will trickle down into the end of the brush and the brush will get wet so if you can see on my finger maybe you can't see the brush is wet see so it doesn't take very much so i'm going to attempt to mix some color now i have not used this set other than the swatching that i just showed you and so we will find out how this goes all right so if you've watched um Brie from Documented Journey. She is like a fabulous watercolor person. And she puts down like her darker colors where she has laid out her map. I am still figuring out how to do that. She was, um, went to art school and she was an art teacher for a long time. So she has a lot more experience with, the, with this than I do. But I do watch her and try to learn from her. And I read watercolor books and I try to learn from them too. And then I just kind of wing it because at the end of the day, it is just watercolor and it's just for fun. I am not attempting to be some sort of expert at watercolor. I'm not going to sell my pieces. If I do something really nice, I might make stickers and sell them in an Etsy shop because everyone likes a sticker, right? But I'm not going to be listing my art pieces. What bug? There wasn't a bump. I promise there wasn't a bump. You like the watercolors? Mm -hmm. Yeah. You like the pumpkin? Mm -hmm. Did you make two versions? Did you make two? Two pumpkins? Mm -hmm. No. Were you wanting to watercolor pumpkin? Yeah. Well, mommy can draw you one or you can color that sugar skull. Sugar skull. Okay. Can I color it right now? You gotta wait till I'm done videoing and then you can do it. Okay? I'm pretty close, yeah. I can help you. No, baby. You could help me by going and finishing watching your show. Okay? Well, I'll watch a little bit of it in a little bit, baby. So 
sometimes mom stuff interrupts video stuff, especially because this is a hobby, I guess you would say. So not my full-time job. I've got two of those, being a mom and my actual career, which I wish that I could have a career out of journaling and painting and drawing and all that fun stuff. If it paid the bills the way that my career does, I would be really happy just because this is a whole lot more fun. But I'm very good at my job and it's not realistic to think that I could do this full time, at least not at this stage. So therefore I do it for fun and to share with you guys and to try to teach and impart wisdom of things that I know and also to learn from you guys because you guys always have great feedback and commentary that help me. So there is the orange part of our pumpkin. I think it turned out pretty good. We've got some lights and darks, some mixes. Might add a little bit more of the brown just for a little bit of variation. But all in all, I think it looks pretty good. What do y'all think? All right, so there is our pumpkin. I'm gonna wipe that off. And now we need to do our stem. So with the stem, I need it to be green, but I have learned from Brie that if you add purple, it can really help your greens get darker and kind of sap greeny. So we are going with that. So I am going to lightly add some color to that and then I'm not going to do as much color variation in the stem because I want to attempt to go back over it with the brush pen that we got in the set just to kind of show how you could use the pieces together right so that is what I'm going to do and maybe we need a little bit of a little bit of purple. Oh, too much purple. Too much purple. I did not mean to do that, but you know what? I'm really not using the right brush for this part because that is really thin, and this is not a very thin brush. But look at that, we added a little bit of the green to the purple and it made like a nice brown color. So we will add a little bit more green to it. And sort of mix it up. And then once we add that sepia brush, we should be good. Look at that. We saved the day. That wasn't that hard at all, was it? What do y'all think? like it needs a little bit darker right there a little bit so now we have a green stem so this I've got to let it dry for just a second and I did get a little bit oops a little bit of that on the actual pumpkin but if I kind of spread it around a little bit and just add a little bit of the orange it brings it right back 
and it just kind of looks like a little shadow, right? All right, so we are done with the watercolor part, but we want to use the brush pen. Oops. So this is, ooh, sorry about that guys. So this is the brush pen and I had primed it when I was doing that first video, but it doesn't seem to keep the ink in there very well without priming it each time, which makes a little bit of sense. But the brush pen kind of works like that. And I am not good with these at all. But we are only gonna use it to add a little bit of extra color and dimension. So I'm gonna use it to add a little bit of edges to the ends there. And to make my pumpkin stalk, it might be a little wet still. So I'm just going to use it to add a little bit to the stalk. And I think we will put just a little more green in this one because it came out a little brown. And then I can use the brush to kind of blend what I did with that. And there we have our little fall pumpkin that we made with the travel watercolor set from the stationery selection sub box from September. So you can see some of the color variation. These watercolors perform really well. They seem to mix really well. They definitely are easy to use and they are very vibrant, which I like. I am not a fan of fountain pen inks or watercolors that are dull or like dingy toned, I guess. Um, and it happens. There are some, a lot of people like things that are less bright and vibrant, but I love color. So I like them to be vibrant and bright. And I love the effect that we have going on here. It's not bad for my first ever watercolor pumpkin, right? So it might be one of the first times I've sketched one in this size as well. Usually when I sketch a pumpkin, it's something very small in my journal or a little picture for my son. So that is our watercolor. That is the September box. You saw the October box. I hope you enjoyed this video, even though it was a little bit different and a little bit disjointed just because it wasn't a traditional unboxing. But I did want to show you some of the uses of the actual materials that we get and show you the differences in the boxes you can get from the subscription so that if it's something you've been pondering getting, you can decide if it's for you. Make sure, like I said, that you follow Stationery Selection on Instagram and sign up on their website for the newsletter if it is something that you're interested in. Make sure you follow me on Instagram if you aren't already. It is just scribble.yt. That is my Instagram handle. Make sure you're subscribed to my channel if you want to check out more art, fountain pen, and journaling related videos. There will be more art ones coming up soon and then some additional fountain pen and planner ones also planned for the next week or two. I hope that you enjoyed this video. Please give me a thumbs up if you did, and don't forget to just scribble.